welcome back, YouTube friends. It's Nanny and Moose, and we're getting ready for St. Patty's Day coming up next week. Top of the morning to you. Irish stew today, mainly because Moose loves it, and our big traditional St. Patrick's Day party, which normally is a huge thing for 150 people up at Colleen and Micah's, uh, has been canceled. And so we're not doing the corned beef and cabbage. However, we have prepared all of these lovely things for our stew, and after that, we're going to do another dish that we love, which is called cold cannon. Cold cannon is done with mashed potatoes, sometimes leftover potatoes. And then we're going to do an Irish soda bread. So for the sake of time, we have prepared and cut the vegetables. The stew meat is braising. And I think we'll get to it. So Moose is gonna start with some history of Ireland and History of the potato. Take it away, folks. Somehow or other, the potato got to um, Europe uh, and they credit uh, Walter Raleigh uh, with bringing it to, to, the, to Europe. He planted it in his backyard. And, <laughs> You see, Walter Raleigh was famous for growing tobacco, and the problem was when potatoes started growing in the ground, there was great uh, foliage on the surface, and uh, Walter Raleigh decided he'd better smoke that, and, and it tasted bad, but nevertheless, he liked the potatoes. <laughs> That's a good one. And that was in 1586, if I remember. Now, the potato was adopted by Ireland shortly thereafter. The Ireland did become the only one who really took to the potato they and made it their main their main food. They were dependent upon it. And as everybody knows, when the when the blight came in 1845 and killed all the Irish potatoes so that people had nothing that they could live on. You had a famine, a true famine. And they said, oh well, if we can get through this year, we'll have potatoes next year. Same thing year, the next year, year after that, year after that. And each year, more people would leave the country. So the immigration started to Canada and the U.S. as a result of the potato famine. But in the meantime, millions of people, I understand that the population, my recollection, has went from 5 million to 2 million, of which um, 1.5 million emigrated and the other 1.5 million died. Back to the stew for a minute. Oh, good. It's so easy to do. That's why we that love this. Yeah, not Irish whiskey. Oh. This is beef broth, low sodium, and I'm putting a whole box in. Uh, we've added the potatoes, chopped up, the carrots, chopped up. I did chop up a little bit of a turnip. Bill's not wild about the turnips, but it's sort of taking the place of the leeks. Onions, some green onions, and sweet onions and celery. I mean, everybody knows what's in a stew, but um, what else did we put in? So now I'm putting the broth in. And this will probably cook for a couple of hours. You can also do this in your, oops. That's a turnip, I love it. I, well, I don't know. Um, you can also do this in a crock pot. So that's it with the stew. I also bought Kerrygold butter. Irish butter, which we will use in the cold cannon, and we will probably cook this most of the day. I will make the gravy. Um, I will turn it down. Yeah. There, way down. 
uh, the gravy you make from the flour. I'll put a little flour in there after a while. When we take uh, the stew out, we'll mix the flour with the uh, liquid. So we'll tend to our stew for a few minutes and we'll come back and make the cold stew. We're back and we're ready to start the cold cannon. Um, once again, you know our kitchen is fogging up a little bit, I think. It's pouring rain outside and the windows are all steamed up from the heat from the stew and hopefully it's clear enough. Moose is going to do the mashing of the potatoes. Oh, I'm gonna, oh you're gonna mash them in the pot? Of course. Good. How you doing? Good. Perfect. Good. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave this here. This, you don't want this for the finer, I won't do. All right, well, I'll leave it here in case you want it. Now when Moose finishes mashing, it's supposed to be nice and fine. Uh, I have braised, it's said to braise the cabbage just slightly uh, for 10 minutes with a little water. And, um, Could you put a tiny bit of milk in this? Or? You want the milk now? Okay. Well, you want to I've also warmed up the mixture of the milk, and I did a little bit of milk for just extra. All right, to help it, let me stir it up. Good. Good. Um, this is a full stick of butter. Look how. <laughs> Look how buttery it is, I'm gonna show you here. Uh, I heated up a little bit of buttermilk and a little bit of milk. I think it was a, a cup of milk and a stick of butter. Heated it up and this will go into the mash with the braised cold cannon. And basically that's, that's it. You ready for this or more? The braised cabbage is going in. Now, Cold Cannon is also has a couple of different names. Okay. You know, they said to possibly put it in a blender or a food processor to chop it up into tiny pieces, but I didn't have to do that. It's tiny enough as is. You know, we used to make this with the leftovers from the party, the uh, Cornif and Cabbage Party at the Taser, of course. And, um, we had this the next morning, and it was a good cure for whatever might be troubling you the next day. I think I've mentioned you might have watched our um, video right after Christmas where we did a, a tour of this adobe, this 90-year-old adobe we live in. And it's a little cottage on Micah and Colleen's property. Colleen is our youngest of six children. And we've lived here 15 or 16 years. We feel so blessed because we, we see children all the time and now they're growing up, but fortunately we're close by. And, oh, how is it? What does it need? Oh. <laughs> That's delicious. Is it? You okay? I would, sure. Sure. Well, well, we didn't put any other goodies in yet. Like what? Mm. You know what? what? I probably could have put more cabbage in, but um, the uh, mixture of the buttermilk and the milk, I did sort of half and half, and the... Um, butter. Oh, that carry Irish butter really makes it great. All right, let's put it in here. You hold the, or you want to do this? Yeah. Now, I think I mentioned that I don't have any bacon in the house. Uh, traditionally, what they would do is they would make a nice big mash. I didn't make that much cold cannon because it's just Bill and I. I'll probably give some to the kids. And, um, what they do after they make the nice big bowl for the family, they make a sort of a little hole in the middle, sprinkle it with. Are you gonna put something in there? I love this because I'm a butter fan, but I'm not eating butter now. Go ahead. Just a wee bit. 
because they say, ooh, that looks nice. Now, wouldn't that look pretty? I'm going to take that up with some bacon bits or crushed up bacon. And this is cold cannon. You can see the, you can see the cabbage in there. And basically, it's just uh, cabbage, mashed potatoes, a little salt and pepper, maybe a teeny bit of garlic. Uh, I would have gone out and clipped some of my chives, but it's raining too hard it's outside. my face. But that's it. Anyway, Please. so now we've made two potato dishes. Our next little cooking bit is going to be the Irish soda bread. And um, before we do that, I think I have to talk about our outfits. And this year, the only time I get to wear this outfit is at the big St. Patrick's Day party. So I decided to dress up in part of it. When we lived in Scotland, oh gosh, 45 years ago now, maybe it's 50, it seems so long ago. I had a kilt made to the floor and this beautiful, I think they call it a plate, P-L-A-I-T that you wear over your shoulder. I have the most gorgeous pins. You can see, I just love all my pins. And I have this larger one that was given to me by Willie Goff, a Scottishman who fought in the African front during the war. He was a piper and he wore that pin on his kilt. I, I can't even imagine walking through the fields, piping, and he gave that to me the day we, I'm gonna get upset, but the day we left to go home. I can't talk. Why is that? Well, he, he was there and he piped us, he piped us through the house. So every, he started to piping and everybody trailed behind him through all the rooms of the house and then out onto the street. And that was, that was you think it was late to see us go? No, we had wonderful Why Scottish friends. Why did everybody friends. go like this and were they clapping? They were clapping about at three in the morning. But he's sober. A, about a year ago, I gave the pen to our oldest son, Billy. Who started the Piper Association, the Los Angeles Fire Department Pipes and Drums in Los Angeles, what, 10 years ago or more? 15, yeah. 15. And uh, Billy would wear that. I thought it was so special that one of the kids had to have it. So Billy wears that. And um, I did get a replacement one, um, an antique one, and a few others. And Bill's hat, I love his hat. Years and years and years ago, every Christmas, all the men that Bill bought for Christmas, all the sons and then the grandsons as they grew up. And I bet there's, gosh, we have 20 grandchildren and 10 great grandchildren, six kids. And I bet three quarters of all those guys have this great I think there were 70, $75 or something. That yeah. Was and don't you love his Irish sweater? Oh yeah. We'll be back in a minute to finish up our cooking session with the Nellie Flanagan, my grandma's, Irish. The last cooking episode of the day is our Irish soda bread. And there are many, many types. Most of you are probably familiar with the rounded ball of Irish soda bread. And this bread can come with raisins or currants, with caraway seeds, it can be brown bread, with wheat flour, or it can be the white flour. And you'll always notice that there is a cross across the top of each soda bread. And you know, Moosey, why? It's to keep the devil and the fairies out. <laughs> or in, back to Irish superstition. I can't remember what my grandma said. Not leprechauns, they're out in the fields with the pot of gold. This is for the devil okay. to let them out and also for the fairies. 
and I don't know whether the fairies get in or out, but that's why the cross is there. Of course, the significant... Take it in, the leprechauns are no, uh, elbowing them out of the way, those fairies. <laughs> now, um, the scones. This is also something, and by the way, this is the easiest bread to make, which is why the um, uh, Irish loved it so much. No yeast. Uh, all the soda breads, the different types, and the scones are made from baking soda. You, you put the baking soda in to give it its levitation. Um, not necessarily yeast, or you have to wait all day long. So um, basically, it's so easy, and the Irish made this, and the kids had this, and the family, all, every single day. Over here, we have the scones, of which Moosey had one for breakfast this morning. And scones are basically uh, the same, maybe a little more egg. And they have, uh, they can have, I think these have blueberries in them. So we're ready to go with my Grandma Nellie Flanagan's version of Irish soda bread. Hers is a sweeter type of a bread. It's cooked in a loaf pan in the oven and it has the same ingredient. The buttermilk is the ingredient used for all of these. It's probably the secret ingredient. Um, and of course we have raisins, currants, little bit of sugar. Nellie Flanagan's bread has more sugar than this. This is a harder crusted type of a bread. Nellie's is a sweet bread, which we will begin. Now the secret of Nellie's bread. In 1931, General Foods came out with something that took over the world. And I'm gonna show you what it is. Bisquick. Ooh. Now the purists would not be very happy. They came out in 1931 with this form of bread mix, pancake mix, and it was a hit right from the start. It has the, all the ingredients in it, the milk, whatever. We do actually put extra eggs into our soda bread, but the biscuit can be used for anything and that's the recipe that Nellie has. I almost hate to say it because the Irish would get very upset, but we did use the biscuit. This says, this. this says eat before this February 1934. <laughs> that box isn't that. So, we shall begin. I have measured into this bowl three cups of biscuit. We're starting with three cups of biscuit. Lucy, will you read to me? This thing is yellow with age. That is very, very it old. It says Nora Faye. Well, now that's interesting. It's Nora Faye. No, it was my mother, my actually probably my grandmother did use it with the flour. Uh, I think it calls for three or four cups of flour. If you're not using Bisquick, everything else is the same. Nora Fay was an Irish lady, a friend of my mother's. And my mother said that Nora Fay had the better recipe because it was quick. How many cups of buttermilk? Two. One, which I'll do just the one. Now I'll add an egg, it's easier to do this. Two eggs go into this recipe. And I will put the recipe um, on the video. Need a little more buttermilk now. Another cup. Only two cups? Yes. Okay. Actually, I thought I had more buttermilk. I usually make two loaves. I always uh, double this recipe, but didn't have enough. Now. It's a, it's a gooey dough. It's not something you could roll. Um, there are other types of Irish bread that you can roll out and do all sorts of things with. But these, this particular one is a gooey bread as I pour it into the loaf pan. How much sugar, most? Oh, tell me. One fourth of a cup of sugar. I'm trying to get the lumps out. This makes a, a great morning bread, which I heat up and put a lot of butter on the top. And we'll have it with coffee, breakfast. But you can also have it with your stew or with your cold cannon. 
Okay, I think that's okay. Might have a few months for time's sake, we're gonna leave it. Now the currants. Okay. Raisins, actually. Half a cup of raisins. Yep. Yeah, half a cup of raisins. I would put more in, but we'll call it half a cup. And I love caraway seeds. And it's very traditional. I know, Moose doesn't like them. They stick in my teeth. But, but I'm going to put a, a few in. I love the caraway seeds. Now, uh, <laughs> caraway seeds are in many, many things that the Irish make. So just give it up for the Irish today, Moose. We're going to pour this into my loaf pan, which I have buttered and uh, floured. And do it this way. Oh, heavy. See how runny it is? some lumps but they'll disappear. Irish shamrock plant in the rain. So typical of Ireland. Oh, see those? What are those? And this is closed. Um, but this was a relic. And it maybe it was something for whiskey and yeah. the rain. Yeah or baking, if anyone no. of our Irish friends out there know, give us a call on our comments, let us know. We'd love to hear from you all, by the way. Tell us if you'd like this video, and I apologize to the Irish right now for any discrepancies I might have made or said in um, our cooking today or our facts, but we enjoy, uh, especially, at this time of year and all year long, we all enjoy being being Irish. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I know we won't be all getting together for um, gatherings, but uh, let's all remember the victims and all the countries all over the world that are affected by this virus right now, coronavirus, and pray for everyone. Ah, you found it. Bye, everybody. We love you. We're ready to dig in and have a beautiful supper. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. And please subscribe and let us know what you think of this. I know it's long and we chatted a lot, but we had fun. We enjoyed it. And I hope you did, too. Soda bread. You can see the texture is harder and drier with a very, very flaky, hard crust. And that's the difference between the two breads. Nelly Flanagan's sweet, moist, light Irish bread baked beautifully. If I found some bacon bits, it looks prettier with the bacon bits. Still with the cool, cool butter in the middle. Looks lovely. And our Irish Tullamore Dew.